Welcome to another episode of the Clinical Career Collective Soap News. For those of you who are new to us and our mission, C3 is a professional development community for the mental health professional at large. We are here to support you so that you can learn, advance, and become the clinician the world needs now. You can find us at our website, www.clinicalcareercollective.com, or find us on YouTube at our channel, Soap News. And of course, we are extending an invitation to join our C3 Facebook page at Clinical, the number two professional, and follow us on LinkedIn at Clinical Career Collective. I am Amity Cooper, your host and creator of the SOAP News, and as a trained clinician, I really benefited from applying the SOAP Note method in my practice. So when I started C3, I thought it would be a really fun way to craft a blog series that incorporated the same principles as the SOAP Note. What better way to get updates, tips, inspiration, and reviews about relevant, on-point clinical and business topics affecting our industry today? Today's SOAP Note is all about generational differences within technology. You know, as a mental health provider, if you work with a variety of ages, you are likely used to thinking about how generational differences affect the way you offer your services. Well, today's note will be focusing on how different generations interact and use technology. And we'll also be tackling the critical questions such as how these generational challenges and strengths interact with technology within your practice. So how well do you know the way different generations use technology? If you're not super familiar, don't stress. And hopefully by the end of this soap note, you will be much more informed about the different technology trends for each generation. And as, and, and as well, how you can use this information in your own practice. First off, let's go over some statistics about these different generations. First off, we have the silent generation, and it includes people born between 1928 and 1945. In the past few years, this generation has had the highest growth in terms of their use of social media and owning smartphones and tablet computers, which is so surprising to me. That being said, as a whole, this silent generation is unfamiliar with most areas of technology. Then you move into the baby boomer generation. These people are born between 1946 and 1964. Although baby boomers were the first generation to use home computers, nowadays they are often hesitant to introduce new technologies into their lifestyles. Like the silent generation, the baby boomers have also seen a growth in technology usage in the last few years, but they tend to be a little more hesitant on the everyday um, acculturation of these new services. Then we get to Generation X, and this is a generation of people born between 1965 to 1976. This generation is accustomed to using smartphones to access apps, social media, and the internet, but their primary forms of communication have remained email and the telephone. And I would also throw in that texting, I mean, via the telephone, seems to be really popular. Then we have Millennials or Generation Y. These people are born between 1977 and 1996. This generation grew up with social media and smartphones, and they feel most comfortable text messaging or using social media to communicate. In fact, many millennials will go out of their way to avoid phone calls, and this generation has the broadest range in terms of technological usage. Generation Z, also referred to as iGen or Centennials, is a generation of people born in 1996 and later. Generation Z is the most comfortable using handheld devices and accessories to communicate. This group is incredibly fluent with new technologies and is very connected to messaging apps and social media at large. I want to give a special thanks to Digital Media Solutions and MarTechZone, the sources responsible for so much of this data. So stay with me as I expand on each generation's technological use, as well as I explain how this information can be useful to you. 
Okay, so some of the observations, the changes in smartphone usage over time. You know, the use of technology has been widely adopted across generations. By 2019, get this, 81% of American adults own a smartphone. That's nearly 50% more an increase from 2011. By generation, um, we have 93% of Generation Y or Millennials, 90% of Generation X, and 68% of Baby Boomers, and 40% of the Silent Generation all are using smartphones, which is an incredible, an incredible feat. Just in the matter of 20 years, we've seen this huge exponential shift in how we access and carry our information with us, how networked we are. While millennials lead in overall smartphone ownership and usage, the steepest growth over the past few years has been in the silent and baby boomer generations. Then we come to social media usage. Similar trends can be seen with social media usage with 86% of millennials active on social media compared with 76 of Gen X and 59 of boomers and 28% of the silent generation. Millennials have the most overall usage remaining relatively unchanged over these last number of years, whereas the silent and baby boomer generation sees less usage, but a greater increase in usage over these past few years. Is it possible that this trend can be explained by older generations looking to connect with their younger friends and relatives possibly, or through texting and phone sharing like apps like Instagram and Facebook? It's a good question, and I do not know that answer, but that is my guess. Tablet usage has greatly increased over the last few years, seeing that, um, noting that the silent generation is uh, still in the lowest rung at 33% of using tablets, but that is increasing. And desktop computers are generally more popular than laptops between baby boomers at 64% and um, uh, millennials who really, really sort of live on the laptop. As you're aware, it's important as a mental health provider to understand how a client connects to the world around them. Introducing a new method of communication or treatment completely out of their comfort zone could cause a lot of stress and frustration. We all saw this happen during the pandemic as everyone adjusted to doing telehealth appointments. So what can we expect from each generation regarding openness to using new technologies and mental health? Technologies such as mental health apps and telehealth calls will fit very easily into the lifestyle of someone from the millennial generation and the centennial generations. These generations are already so accustomed to communicating virtually that in some cases this might be preferable to them, even post-pandemic. It sort of fits into their lifestyle of being digital nomads. That's something that I have seen um, consistently. We're just so, they're just so adverse. They're so versed in um, using all different facets of communication to meet their needs of where they are at any one time. Um, it really is sort of a no-brainer for them. Now, moving into new and cutting edge technologies like virtual reality could be, there's lots of studies that are showing that it's very beneficial in treatment for a number of issues at hand or disorders. But I would stress that it would be really beneficial more for a member of the millennial or centennial generation as they're more likely to have some prior experience with this, this kind of technology, whether it's mostly playing games or um, 
just doing different kinds of social media uh, video technology. Generation X did not grow up with technology, but they have adapted to it over the years and are quite equipped to handle telehealth appointments. They also may be interested and comfortable using more mental health apps because as um, the majority of Generation X um, users tend to be um, very inquisitive about new tech. They're more patient and willing to learn uh, as they go to adopt smart technology. Although many clients have switched over to telehealth during the pandemic, the silent generation and baby boomers do not use handheld devices or smartphones as their primary means of communication. They may wish to return to in-person visits after the bad pandemic, despite the recent growth in laptop and tablet usage. Depending on your client's generation, you may have a lot of flexibility when it comes to different treatment methods and the technology available. However, although a client's generation will tell you a lot about their tech environment as a whole, there will always be outliers. Baby boomers and the silent generation as a whole are not very willing to engage with newer technologies, but you may find yourself talking to one or more of those members responsible for the recent upward trend in cell phone and tablets, tablet usage. By learning the, way, the ways your client and their generation interact with the world around them in terms of technology, you will have a better idea as to which services might best fit their needs. Are they already familiar with the platform you're suggesting? If not, then get their folk then um, their focus might be pulled away from the content of the service and place on the medium. Generational differences play a key role in determining the way a client may engage in a treatment. Lastly, if you're interested in learning more about the new and cutting edge technologies affecting our mental health practices today, then I'd like to invite you to register for our monthly SOAP newsletter. With this subscription, you will receive a monthly review of all the weekly soap notes, gain access to members-only interviews and conversations with special guest speakers, and you will have the chance to purchase our monthly soap box that contains products, coupons, and discounts to all our mentioned items reviewed during the soap note recordings. Of course, I wouldn't be remiss not to mention our 2021 Do This First 7-Day Boot Camp Challenge where you can craft and launch your new clinical practice in just seven days, even if you don't know a thing about business. If you're interested in learning more, please click on the DTF thumbnail or go to our www.clinicalcareercollective.com forward slash DTF webpage. See you next time and stay safe.